All right, instant reaction edition of the Penn State 365 podcast. You know the lingo. I'm your host, Richie O'Leary. Uh, I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Dylan Callan Crawley. Dylan, practice just ended. James Franklin just gave us some pretty bad news. And it sounds like KJ Winston, Kevin Winston Jr. is going to be out for the long term. You can decipher that for as long as you want. It's obviously going to be at least a couple weeks. So kind of just uh, what's the feeling there? I know it's not a good one. Oh, yeah. Major, major significant blow here to Penn State. You know, uh, Winston, one of their top players overall, if not their top overall player on this roster. And now uh, he's gone. Uh, How long? We don't know. Uh, You know, I guess uh, to a degree, the silver line is that this doesn't necessarily seem like a season ending injury since James Franklin, I think, would have said, you know, he's out for the season. Um, but, uh, you know, I think you look at how he's handled these other injuries that happened this spring that, uh, may have been previously reported as season ending and he's saying, uh, more long-term and they expect people back this fall. Penn State clearly has playoff aspirations this year. Playoffs don't start, I believe, till December 20th. So, I mean, I, I, I would say from off the bat, I don't think this changes Penn State's trajectory this year. I still think this is a, a 10 and 2 team without KJ Winston. Uh, it, it, I think it becomes more likely they now lose those games to USC and Ohio State, but I still think this could be a yeah. playoff team. Uh, I think the goal here is obviously for Winston to be back by a potential playoff game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, major blow until then. Uh, it really, you know, they got Jalen Reed and Zaki Wheelie, two veterans there in the safety room that they're going to trust and rely on. Um, and they do rely, trust on trust both of those guys, but they'll have to rely on them even more now with uh, Winston out. Uh, but that third safety spot, this is a 4-2-5 defense that Penn State runs. Uh, they run a trio of safeties a lot on the field, and it looks like days on lane, or it not looks like, it will be days on lane is the next man up. And uh, he's played three total snaps for the first two weeks. Yeah, it's kind of intriguing because like when uh when he went down against Bowling Green a couple weeks ago, he didn't Dejon Lane played what legitimately? I think those that, those were his three snaps in that game, correct? Uh, he played those three games, three snaps against West Virginia. He didn't even play oh, it wasn't even Bowling the, Green. So no, he who did not play him Bowling when it was game. Bowling Green. Then did they just fill in a little bit? Kind of yeah. just uh, I'm trying um, to think. I guess Kimber played a little bit more because he played 49, whereas. The other two corners also played 49. I guess you could also kind of slot Jalen Reed back at safety and then put Cam Miller as the, yeah, the slot yeah. nickel corner. Yeah, the, you, you, they'll be able to do a couple different things with the line position. Mm-hmm. But uh, line, Lane nickel. is going to have to get, you know, significant snap. Oh, he's gonna, is going to see significant snaps going forward with the loss of Winston. There's no uh, if, hands, or butts about it. Uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're going to need three safeties to play on a routine basis here. And yeah, they yeah. may go more Cam Miller or, or different types of options from the cornerback room into that line position early, but, uh, eventually they'll need, you know, to go back to, uh, the three safety look if all goes well. Uh, and a good, the good news for them is they got Kent state this weekend. Um, obviously you don't want to lose another safety and you got to be careful now, yeah. but Lane, Lane should play significant amount of snaps this week. And I wouldn't be shocked if we see him go longer than uh, the rest of the starters this weekend against Kent state and what should be a blowout win for Penn state. But now uh, here, here's the, the big, the bigger blow is, uh, you know, if a certain King Mac never left, yeah. I mean, yeah. now you're a starter if you're King Mac, but you decided to leave, go take a bag and it is what it is. Um, I guess with these two safety set or three safety sets, uh, the line position, whatever you want to call it, um, there's no chance, I guess, DeLuca. No, DeLuca's probably too big to play it now. Yeah, no, I, I it's it's too risky. You have to, and it's, they're not going to change the whole scheme just because it's, no. it's still Tom Allen's scheme at the end of the day. This is yeah. just going to have to be Poindexter earning his money now. Yeah, and uh, James Franklin, you know, on Monday kind of alluded to uh, Days on Lane being the next guy. Is he, he flat out said he's the next guy we're trying to get reps with that. Uh, It'll be important. They're going to have to develop a few more guys, especially um, with the injury. And But definitely for the short term, they were going to have to develop. And Day-Day was going to be really important for them this week and going forward as well. Uh, so, I mean, there's a reason he got the green line coming in the season. They really think he can be something True. special for them. Uh, he was Him and Cooper Cousins were the only ones coming into the season that got the green line. Uh, Luke Reynolds joined them this week, obviously. But... Uh, yeah, it's 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 a throwing a lot on of pressure onto a true freshman's plate here, and 
he's going to have to play really well against the likes of USC and Ohio State for Penn State to have an opportunity to win both of those games as well, assuming Winston's still out. I mean, uh, the USC game is three weeks away, which I would probably say seems doubtful. Yeah. Uh, and then Ohio State's November 2nd. I, I, I would say that definitely uh, is in the long-term category th- there if he was out till then. But again, we're just speculating of how long he could truly be out. Uh, it could be end of October. It could be end of November. It could be the rest of the season. It remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, definitely a significant blow for Penn State and one that uh, they definitely wish King Mac would have sticked around because that would have uh, definitely provided the room uh, with more depth coming to this season. Uh, but it's, uh, not the cards that uh, Anthony Poindexter has dealt. No, well, like you said, Kent State this week, probably the worst team in uh, FC, uh, FBS currently. Yep. Um, so it would give you a good chance for Lane to actually shake off a little bit of a – I shouldn't even say rust because he just has – he's a true freshman. Yeah, he's played it, three snaps. It's just – he's so super green. It's just you got to get him some reps this week. And then the good news is Illinois is not the best throwing team in the country, so you can yeah. get some good reps against uh, them. And UCLA flat out stinks. So right. <laughs> one, I, I two, three. At, I was looking at their schedule the remainder of the year, and you look at it – the the only teams that really could throw the ball around are USC and Ohio State at a consistent mm-hmm. rate. Illinois is not. UCLA is not really good at anything. Wisconsin is going to have a true, uh, uh, sorry, a sophomore quarterback, but they're not very good. Washington could be a little tricky, depending on how that offense is at that point. It's pretty good. Um, but Purdue won't throw the ball, won't be much of a threat. Minnesota is more Run of a running heavy. team. And Maryland, I don't see as much of a threat either. So the good yeah. news is, like I said, I don't think it changes Penn State's trajectory this season. Uh, I think 10-2 is still likely here. They're still probably a playoff team. But if they're going to do anything in the playoffs, I think they're going to definitely have to get Winston back. Uh, but uh, perhaps Lane will surprise us all and uh, emerge here over the next few weeks. Uh, I, I don't think Penn State would complain about that. Yeah, like I said, Poindexter has to uh, earn his paycheck now. Um, now more than ever, to be honest with you. Absolutely. Uh, but a couple different options there. Just wanted to get on here, give a, give you guys a quick uh, little instant reaction to this. We're going to try to do more of these in the future going forward. But uh, Dylan, anything else really quick before we sign off? Um, I guess just quickly, uh, quick practice, uh, injury updates. Uh, beyond that was um, – I pulled up here from our good friend, uh, Zach Seiko, who was at practice today for us. Um, Retro freshman linebacker Tamir Robinson was back at practice today after missing last week's practice. He left the uh, West Virginia game with an injury, so that's good news for them there. Caden Saunders was practicing in the uh, today. He's been banged up, obviously, for the last few weeks, uh, as James Franklin alluded to earlier this week. Uh Grunkmeyer was practicing, um, and Cliff Dinkins looked to be uh, a full participant as well. So Penn State uh, does have some good injury news uh, coming into this weekend. But obviously, the Nittany Lions are probably one of the more beat-up Big Ten teams so far this season, yeah. uh, which uh, not, not uh, great news. No, it's been a rough start for Penn State to start the season at least. But the good news is they just had that bye week, so you would hope that they got Lane some pretty good work during that. Um, and they got another bye week coming up in a month. That's true. And if you haven't haven't already, check it out below on our YouTube page. You can check out the James Franklin press conference from uh, Wednesday's practice. That's on there. We also have an instant reaction to uh, Penn State basketball, landing a top 150 kid in Mason Blackwood. Uh, really good get for them today. So shout out to uh, Mike Rose and those guys. Huge win, and it doesn't sound like they're done yet. Uh, they have a really good chance at another one, maybe a top 50 kid, so to speak. So go listen to that. Check that one out. But uh, yeah, for me and Dylan, that's uh, another instant reaction to the Penn State 365 podcast. Signing off.